Hi there. So this video is an introduction to the station rotation model, which is um, actually not originally designed as an online uh, lesson format, but has been revised for that purpose. This particular model was created by Catlin Tucker, who is um, a widely known expert in blended and online learning. She was originally a high school English teacher and speaks really well to the high school audience. I have uh, included in your module a reading, which is a blog post by Catlin Tucker called Station Rotation in an Era of Social Distancing, where she explains how this model that she originally designed for the classroom can be applied in a hybrid or online classroom situation. Um, so definitely go and read that. And I encourage you to explore other elements of her blog or to pick up some of her books. Um, she has a great way of really explaining how this kind of learning can work. So let's go over just the, the goals and uh, basic components of this lesson format, and then we'll take a quick look at the template, which is also included in your module. So the goal of a station rotation mod, uh, lesson design is that uh, you use it on a day where you need to design a lesson with a set of tasks that can be completed in any sequence. So in other words, students are doing those tasks at different times in a uh, station rotation model, which in a classroom might have been a physical set of stations in your classroom that students would move between, but in an online world would turn into a set of sort of digital stations that they complete these tasks in. It means that it has to be the type of lesson where it doesn't matter in what sequence students do these tasks. So uh, it's not going to work for every lesson, but it's particularly good for times where you have a variety of things that students need to complete. So it's ideal for lessons where you want students to do some uh, self-exploration of a topic, maybe dig in a little bit deeper, read an extra article, do a little bit of extra research. Um, it's also great for days where you have a series of independent tasks that students need to complete. So uh, in the uh, English world, for example, you might have a lesson where students need to do a little bit, a bit of independent work on a vocabulary lesson, but at the same time, you also need them to do, do some discussion about the recent chapter they read in a novel. It's also a great opportunity to uh, build in time with smaller groups where the teacher can engage in either uh, some lecture or some discussion with a smaller group of the students in a classroom as opposed to the entire group of students. So key components. You design this lesson with three or four task-based activities that can be performed in any sequence. And the reason I'm emphasizing task-based is that in order to keep students on track, they need to have some kind of task that they are completing in each of these activities. Example, if they're doing a vocabulary lesson and they're using a digital tool like Membeam, then they would have a task they need to complete by the end of that lesson, and you can check that they completed that task. You should have a combination of teacher-led, online, and preferably some offline activities as well. So this is great when you want students to do a little bit of creation work or get engaged in their own environments at home. This is an opportunity for you to foster practice, inquiry, creation, and collaboration. So those are the kinds of activities that work really well in this particular kind of lesson. And it can be done in just one period, or you could spread those stations out over a two period time frame. So it could be two days in a row, or if you're in a block setup, it could be the two larger periods of the week where students complete the series of stations over the course of those two periods. Now, just a quick note, the fact that I said task-based, which means students are usually gonna either submit something or show the completion of something, does not mean you have to grade everything. So please don't take this on as, oh my gosh, I'm gonna add you know four new assignments I have to grade just in this one lesson. Don't do that. Um, it may be that you have things that you can just check off that they completed. It may also be that they turn in something that you just give a little bit of feedback on because it's a work in progress. Um, so this lesson is great, for example, for a research paper or for a project that students are working on and you just need them to show that they have completed the next stage of the project. So let's take a, a look at the actual template. Now, this is the template created by Catlin Tucker. And as I said, this is also saved in your module, so you can go dig into this. It's a very simple chart, but just like uh, the HyFlex model that we've looked at as well, this is also designed to help you think through how this lesson would look 
in the course of an online or hybrid world. So these stations do not have to be in this sequence, but I have found it helpful to put in under each of the stations a brief description of what that station experience should be and about how long it should last. The nice thing about the teacher-led piece is that you can split your class up into three or four groups, depending on how many tasks you're having them complete. And that allows you to have that um, more face-to-face -face interaction with a smaller group of students in your classroom. So as an English teacher, this might be a great opportunity to have a small group discussion where you get to be a fly on the wall and kind of make sure that they're understanding what they're doing. It could also be that in a science classroom, you are sitting in with a group of students who are working through a lab report and helping them on that lab report in a smaller group as opposed to the larger group. So some kind of teacher-led station is a key component. Having an online station is also a component. This would be a great place for, uh, like I said, a practice activity. So if you're doing a vocabulary practice, a grammar practice, um, using a tool like IXL or Open Math in a math classroom to do some practice problems, that is something you could do independently as a student or maybe in a partner uh, situation, depending on your environment. And then, of course, it's key to try to get students offline a little bit. So in the case of an English class, for example, you might have students working on a physical timeline of the events in a novel. Or in a science class, perhaps they are doing some physical diagramming of a biome or of a cell, um, giving them a chance to kind of get off the screen a little bit and do something physical wherever they happen to be could be very useful in this type of lesson. So again, this is just a template. Take a moment to dig into the materials in this module. Think about where are times in your upcoming units where having this kind of experience would make sense. And then maybe think about how this lesson could help you design those experiences. So good luck. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon.